Welcome to Soil Structure Software. Uh, this uh, my name is Liba Nafi, and this recording is to show the uh, capabilities of Soil Structure Liquefaction SVT Analysis Software. So we're going to do two examples here. Uh, one of them would be SI units, and the other would be in English units. Uh, so what happens if you don't do liquefaction analysis? Is after an event and the soil liquefies you'll have a bearing capacity failure and you'll have unavoidable tilt uh, in the building foundations and it doesn't matter if it's a mat foundation or a shallow foundation so uh, you can choose units English or SI let's start with SI units uh, the program will ask you for peak ground acceleration and then it's so in this example 0 0.65 G earthquake magnitude let's assume 7.0 and then uh, it will ask you for design ground water which is same as historical that's the maximum height uh, of ground water table at the site uh, and then site ground water table this is the elevation where you hit the water um, during sampling or soil drilling and uh, then you enter the soil unit weight gamma above the ground water table which should be the moist unit weight and then the saturated unit weight below groundwater table which is higher than the moist unit weight uh, borehole diameter um, and then rod length height stick up and that's usually about uh, 1.7 1.8 meters and then if you have a sloping ground you check it and if you and if you have uh, samplers or sample liners uh, like the California sampler you check this so in our case we used SPT, but we do have a uh, sloping ground. So let's take a look at the layers of soil. And this job has five different soil layers. There is zero to two, there is two to three and a half, uh, then three and a half to 10. These depths uh, are the bottom depths. Okay, they're the bottom depth at 15 feet and then 20 feet. Um, they're, they're cohesive soils and then granular soils, they're mixed. Uh, consistency is here if it's cohesive it's very stiff and if it's a granular soil it's medium dense and then the flags let me spend a little time uh, with the flags the flags are unsaturated if they are designed groundwater or above so this is two meters therefore this is a two meters it's unsaturated at three and a half we say we don't know it's not it's not cohesive soil and it's definitely not unsaturated. The, the third layer is also medium dense granular, so we leave it blank. The cohesive soil, MH, so if the plasticity index is 8 or higher, then we flag it as clay. And then the limestone, uh, there is no flag for that. Okay, so we leave it blank. And then we enter the SVT values. Uh, these are raw values, uncorrected, 16. 24 21 12 and 40 and then we enter the fines content this is the minus 200 sieve and for cohesive soils it should be higher than 50 percent so in this case it's 62 granular soil should be less than 50 percent so it's 33 and 15 another cohesive 76 percent and the bedrock happens to be 29 percent now energy ratio uh, this is an automatic hammer that was used so we can say 70 percent uh, uh, energy ratio now these colors you can change it you know so for example you can pick on the color and you can you know pick any color you want or you can go and choose a pastel color and then say okay okay and there it will change the colors so now that we entered everything Oh, if you want the logo, you can go ahead and enter your logo, your company logo. So let's hit calculate result and let's not save it. Okay, so what we have is we have settlement. Uh, so the program will compute the settlement above groundwater table, which is 0.02 meters, and the dynamic settlement, which is the, uh, sorry, and the, uh, the uh, settlement below the groundwater table, which is 0.12. So combined, you have a dynamic settlement of 0.14 meters. And lateral displacement, the program computes that 
if you checked for a sloping ground. So if we take the sloping ground out and we say calculate and we say no, then it doesn't give you a slope uh, lateral displacement. But because we had the sloping ground, it will give us, in this case, 0 0.52 meters of lateral displacement. So now let's look at the, uh, you can hit print and see the analysis, but let's show you on the screen. So you'd say view table and you have one, two, three, four analysis. So liquefaction set analysis one, it's just the correction factors for boring, you know, and uh, then your N60 and the Sigma V, which is your total stress. And if you go to liquefaction analysis set two, you got sigma n fines n160 csr k sigma and then k sigma sand and then crr and then liquefaction so anywhere at, at the, let's okay let's go take a look here All right so if we go into layer one okay actually it would be better to have it like that there if you go layer one it's saying liquefaction safety factor is not applicable that's because it's above the groundwater table, so there is no liquefaction. Layer 2, medium dense, because blow cons were uh, 24, and you're only at 3.5 meter depth, the factor of safety against liquefaction exceeds 2.0. So the program limits it to 2.0. Layer 3, we have an issue, which is a granular soil. It's a 10 meter depth, uh, and the blow counts are only 21. So liquefaction factor of safety is 0 0.58. Okay, so that layer is liquefied. And then uh, layer 4 is not applicable because it's clay. It doesn't liquefy. And then layer 5 is bedrock. At, it, it did not because your blow counts are 40. So now the bottom depth that's liquefying is at 10 meters. Okay, so what you'd have to say is... Uh, at 10 meter depth, what are the stresses from the foundation? Let's say your foundation is minus one foot, minus one meter. When it gets down to 10 meters, how much would the stress decrease? Uh, and then you have a nine meter overburden from one meter to 10 meter before liquefaction becomes an issue. So because of that, you may be able to show from you know static settlement and dynamic settlement that if you reduce the bearing capacity to a smaller value you may be able to uh, not need to do any ground improvement but if you have you know a medium size you know seven ten story building then you'd have to consider uh, treatment between three and a half meter to ten meter depth okay okay so now you could also say view all graphs and then the program will display the n60 the CRR, the CSR, liquefaction factor of safety, lateral displacement, because you have a sloping ground, and the dynamic settlement, it would show you. Okay. And you could say view one graph, and let's say if I just want lateral displacement, uh, it would only show me the lateral displacement. And I can put a, I can see what the values are. Okay, now if you want to print, you'll have to say file, print, and then I don't want to save it and then set up to look at it under a PDF and say OK and it'll take a few seconds and then you can see uh, the page numbers pop up OK so the program produces up to five pages and this is uh, page one okay? and it, it gives you the units are SI it gives you the variables the value you input and then more variables and the values you input it gives you the soil layers that you put in and then at the bottom it uh, summarizes the dynamic settlement 0.14 meters and the lateral displacement which is 0.52 meters this is your cross section for subsurface soil profile these are your liquefaction set analysis one and two and then these are your graphs and final graphs plus you have uh, references okay so we can close that now let's open an example uh, <coughs> that is in uh, English units okay all right so this English units one uh, we can say it's uh, 
uh, that the uh, let's see here uh, that uh, we have English units peak ground acceleration is 0 0.76 g uh, you get that from the uh, USCS earthquake magnitude is seven and a half megawatts design groundwater table it's 16 feet based on uh, the uh, websites that you can look at the groundwater data library but at the site when we drilled it we hit the water at 29 feet and then the gamma above groundwater is 115 unit weight below is 120 borehole was six inch diameter rod length height uh, stick up was three and a half feet now in this case we have a flat ground but we have a correction for sample liners okay all right so you enter just like i showed you earlier uh, at every five foot depth or up until where the soils change so five ten fifteen twenty so far it's every five feet there's different soil and then you go all the way down to minimum of 50 foot to do liquefaction analysis you have to go down to 50 and then you put your uh, consistency and unsaturated because the design groundwater is 16 so 5 10 15 is unsaturated at 20 feet we hit clay it's very hard cohesive ml so it's cl medium dense medium dense medium dense there are no flags for those and another medium dense no flag it's sc and then the bottom two is hard clay cl so we the flags are clay and clay then we come up and we put the spt values that are uncorrected and then we put the minus 200 you know uh sieve percent passing the 200 sieve uh 63 percent 68 24 and so on and then because it was an automatic hammer spt we got 70 percent so we hit calculate and now we can see that the dynamic settlement this is in inches instead of meters si uh, english units so the combined uh, uh, dynamic is 0 0.28 0 0.18 of that is below groundwater table 0.18 inch and 0 0.10 inches above groundwater table so it's it's very very low it's uh, less than two and a half inches so it's only 10 percent of that it's 0 0.28 and similarly if you want to see liquefaction safety factors you look at uh, set analysis number two and na 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 1.38 two, 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 and then, okay so everything is passing here it's either not liquefiable because it's above groundwater table or not liquefy uh, not liquefiable because it is um, clay soil cohesive the bottom two or it's 1.38 higher than 1 and 2.0 higher than 1 so this side passed okay and then you could uh, say view all graphs and you could see now you could see that the, in this here we, we don't have a sloping ground so it does not show you the lateral displacement chart and same thing you'll say file say print and I want to save it and then I just want to pre uh, preview the uh, five pages and in this case actually it happened to be six pages because we had a lot of soil layers instead of four or five layers we had ten soil layers and so the number of uh, result pages are six and you can go through the each page like that and see the results and that's it so uh, hopefully we don't end up with uh, having a foundation failure due to liquefaction and uh, if you need this program you can go to uh, our website which is soilstructure.com thank you for your time